cold, wet night, a father and son play a game of chess. His mother watched them play as she warmed herself by the fire. That's some wind outside, Mr. White says, hoping to distract his son. I can hear it, father, Herbert replies, never taking his eyes off the board. And check. Mr. White makes his move, and again attempts to distract his son. What poor weather. To which his son replied, Checkmate, and smiled. You know, that's the trouble with living so deep in the country. No one wants to travel so far and visit when the weather's poor. Mr. White was clearly sore about losing. Maybe you'll win next time, said Miss White. When Mr. White looked up, he could see his wife and son smiling at each other. Her slight tease hit its mark. Mr. White was now also smiling. It's him! Mr. White hurried to the front door and opened it, revealing a tall man. The man made his way into the home. It was Sergeant Major Morris. The Whites had been expecting him. The chess game was put away and the chairs were arranged so everyone could enjoy the fire and some of Sergeant Major Morris's stories. The Sergeant Major spoke of traveling to different countries, wild adventures, and strange people. 21 years, said the Sergeant Major. 21 years of travel. I was barely a young man when I left. I'd like to see India. I've heard it's a beautiful place, said Mr. White. Better to stay home, said the Sergeant Major as he shook his head. For a moment the room became quiet. Tell that one again, about the monkey's paw, said Mr. White. Sergeant Major Morris's face became gravely serious as he looked into the fire. Miss White poured him some tea. The monkey's paw? Well, that sounds interesting. Whether it was the tea or her voice, the sergeant major was broken out of his trance. Very well. He took a slow drink of the tea and pulled something out of his pocket. I have it right here. And in his hand was a small mummified paw. Herbert took it from him, examined it, and passed it to his father, then asked, What's so special about it? Sergeant Major Morris replied, An old man put a spell on it. The paw has given three different men three wishes each. Mr. White examined the paw closely. It sounds amazing. The wishes are dangerous, said the Sergeant Major, cutting off Mr. White. The Sergeant Major's face went pale, and all at once his face was covered in sweat. Herbert quietly asked, Did you get three wishes? Aye. And did they come true? Aye. And what of the other men that received the three wishes? Did you know them? The sergeant major lowered his head and closed his eyes. The first man. I don't know what his first two wishes were but his last wish was for death. But then why keep it, said Mr. White. Sergeant Major Morris took the monkey's paw from Mr. White's hand. I don't know. I considered selling it, but no one believes it's even real. And even if they did, the devil take it. and all at once he threw the monkey's paw into the fire. Mr. White scrambled to the fire as quickly as he could and pulled out the paw. Better to let it burn. Uh, maybe. Or maybe I could have it? But before Sergeant Major Morris could even reply, Mr. White had already put the paw in his pocket. So how does it work? You hold it in your right hand and make your wish. But I must warn you of the dangers. Without a second thought, 
Mr. White took the paw out of his pocket and held it in his right hand. Sergeant Major Morse grabbed Mr. White's arm and looked him in the eye. Don't make foolish wishes! Wish only for good things! The room had become quiet and still. Sergeant Major Morris looked around and slowly let go of Mr. White. He thanked Miss White for the tea, put on his coat, and prepared to leave. Mr. White walked him to the door. They spoke a little, and Sergeant Major Morris walked out into the night. Mr. White walked back to his family. Mrs. White asked if he gave the Sergeant Major any money for the paw. He did give him a little money, but the Major kept trying to refuse it. He kept encouraging Mr. White to burn the paw. After a moment of silence, Herbert exclaimed, We are going to be rich and famous and happy! Wish to be a king! Mr. White took the paw into his right hand and looked around the room. He took inventory, the chessboard he and his son would play games on, his beautiful wife by the fireplace that kept them all warm. I have everything I could ever want right here in this room right now. Even kings don't have that. He started to consider what Sergeant Major Morris had said. Maybe he should burn the paw now. But before he could properly sort his thoughts, Herbert spoke up again. What about buying the house, Father? We only need 200 more pounds. Now that's an idea, said Mr. White. He firmly grasped the paw in his right hand and held it high in the air. I wish for 200 pounds! All at once, Mr. White began frantically screaming. He dropped the paw on the ground and ran from it. Mrs. White and Herbert ran away from it too though they didn't know why. It... it moved. When I made the wish, I felt it move in my hand. Herbert slowly approached the paw on the floor, never blinking, just cautiously staring at it, examining it. Well, I don't see 200 pounds. Are you sure it moved? asked Miss White. Perhaps it slipped a little in your hand when you held it. Mr. White examined his hand. It looked the same as ever. And the room, and the fire, and his family. All fine as they were at the beginning of the night. <sighs> Maybe I didn't feel it. I'm old. I get shaken up easily. It's very late. I think I'll be off to bed. And with that, both Mr. and Mrs. White headed to bed. Herbert, however, was not ready to sleep yet, so he sat down and continued gazing into the fire. At first the experience was pleasant. Who doesn't enjoy a good fire? But soon after, he began seeing faces in the fire. They were normal faces, looking at him. Looking at him, looking at them. The faces appeared to be saying something. He went in to get a better look. That's when the faces started changing. <gasps> Herbert was terrified, but convinced himself it was late. And with all the talk of monkey's paws and wishes, he just needed a good night's rest. The next morning, everything seemed right. It was a beautiful day. As the family ate breakfast, Mr. White wondered aloud, Why was I so afraid last night? You know, soldiers, they're all the same. They have many stories. But none are true, replied Miss White. But Morris, he seemed so afraid. He believes in the monkey's paw. I know he does. Herbert stood up. Well, I'm off to work. If the money arrives while I'm gone, please wait to spend it. I'd like to see it first. His mother walked him to the door, wished him well, and sent him on his way. A few hours later, the postman came. 
Mr. and Mrs. White sorted through the mail. And not only was there not an envelope with an extra 200 pounds, but in the pile there was an unexpected bill. Mr. White took the news of the unexpected bill especially bad and sat there quietly. He was so caught up in his poor mood, he hadn't noticed the man walking outside his house. Mrs. White, on the other hand, had noticed the man. She watched as he walked back and forth and then back again, standing, looking at the house as if he was searching for something. She brought the man to Mr. White's attention, and the two of them watched as the stranger quietly walked onto the property and knocked on the door. Mr. White sprang up, opened the door, and ushered the stranger inside. The stranger felt off, like there might be something wrong with the man. Mr. and Mrs. White just stood there quietly, waiting for the man to speak. After a few moments, the man said, I am from Ma and Megan's, the factory in town. Ma and Megan's was a name the Whites recognized. It's the factory where Herbert worked. Mrs. White broke into a frenzy. Did something happen? Is Herbert okay? Mr. White helped his wife sit down and asked her to stay calm. For all they knew, the stranger could be bringing good news. The stranger started up again. I'm from Ma and Megan's, and I'm sorry to tell you there's been an accident. Your son fell into the machinery and was badly hurt. But he isn't in pain anymore. Mrs. White breathed a sigh of relief. Thank God, my poor boy. She glanced at Mr. White and saw that he did not experience the same relief that she had, and then realized what happened. Mr. White held his wife's hand and spoke in a soft, broken voice. He was our only child. My little boy. The man couldn't bear to even look at the couple anymore. He walked over to the window, took a deep breath, and recited the following. Ma and Megan's wanted me to tell you. Well, they are both deeply sorry. Everyone is. Ma and Megan's want you to know that they are not to blame for the accident. But they have sent me here with some money to compensate you for the loss. Mr. White turned his head towards the man. He was sweating and trembling. How much money? Two hundred pounds, sir. Mrs. White gripped her chest and fell to the floor hysterically. Mr. White sat there in a daze. The stranger walked over to him, gave him the two hundred pounds, and let himself out. There was a cemetery two miles from the White's home. That's where they buried Herbert. Afterwards, they went home. A heavy sadness followed them. Mr. White sat down and gazed across the room. It was only a few nights ago he and Herbert played chess. His wife suggested they play another game. If only they played just one more game. Days passed, but Mr. and Mrs. White were trapped. Time moved on, but felt to them like it was standing still. They barely slept or ate, and they didn't say a word to each other. There were no words to say. They were just two shadows moving about. Two weeks later, Mr. White woke up in the middle of the night. He reached for his wife, but she wasn't there. It was too dark to see but he could hear his wife crying. He called out to her, Come back to bed, dear. It's cold. It's colder for Herbert, she said, and refused to move. Because of how poorly he'd been sleeping, Mr. White was trapped in a place where he was rarely asleep, but also rarely awake. He closed his eyes for what felt like a second, but must have been longer because when he opened them again, Mrs. White was standing over him, glaring at him. 
The monkey's paw. The monkey's paw. Where is it? The what? The monkey's paw. Where is it? Where have you hidden it? Do you have it? Yes, of course, it's in the cupboard. Get it now. Dear, please, go to sleep. You're not thinking clearly. Get it now! Mr. White was terrified. Mrs. White didn't look like herself, and wasn't acting like herself. There was no telling what she was capable of. All right, he said, and went off to get the paw. When he came back, he showed it to Mrs. White, who responded by laughing maniacally. <laughs> we still have it then, and that means we get two more. Mr. White knew what she was talking about, but was terrified at the thought, so he pretended he didn't understand. Two more what? Listen, it's, it's late. You wanted to see the paw, and I've brought it to you. Now that you know it isn't lost, let's go to bed. No. Wish him back. Dear, our boy is gone. You don't know what you're saying. Wish him back! The first wish came true, didn't it? And we get two more, don't we? Wish. Him. Back. Now. Mr. White was all at once broken. He wanted Herbert back more than anything, but knew in his heart the paw was evil. It would never give him what he wanted. I can't. Please. Mrs. White quieted down, stood up, and slowly approached Mr. White. She looked like an animal, getting ready to attack its prey. Then let me see the paw. Mr. White's one wish destroyed his family and hurt many others. Herbert had co-workers, friends, and a woman he was courting. All robbed by one wish. Someone else getting three? No. Mr. White couldn't allow it. I'll do it right now. Mrs. White froze. Mr. White again held the paw high in his right hand. I wish my son Herbert was alive. Mr. White held his breath as he looked around the room. Nothing changed, except Miss White. She looked exhausted, but peaceful. Mr. White sat beside his wife for half an hour, then said, It's getting late. You don't have to sleep. Maybe you could just lay down and rest while you're waiting. She obliged, and the two were soon off to bed. What's that? Do you hear that? It's Herbert! Herbert? No! Mr. White ran to the bedroom door trapping Mrs. White in the bedroom with him. The cemetery is two miles away. Poor Herbert had to walk by himself here. Let me out. He's probably tired. He needs me. Please don't open that door. There could be anything on the other side of it. All night you've been looking at me like I've been crazy. But here you go, locking me in a bedroom because you're afraid of your own son. Before Mr. White could reply... Mrs. White hit him on the head. He fell to the floor, exhausted, dazed, and Mrs. White got around him. I'm coming, Herbert! Mr. White could hear the knocking getting louder, and could hear Mrs. White talking. Hang on, Herbert! I'm too short to get the top lock! I'll get a chair! Mr. White could hear Mrs. White drag a chair across the floor and fiddle with the lock. It was high up, heavy and awkward, but she was only a few moments away from opening it. Mr. White lied there on the floor, pulled the monkey's paw from his pocket, held it in his right hand, and made his last wish. All at once the knocking stopped. 
he heard the chair fall over and the door open. He held the monkey's paw tightly in his right hand as he got up from the floor and went to check what happened at his front door. When he arrived there, there was nothing. Not only was his son not there, but neither was his wife. He looked outside his front door, but there was no sign of anyone. 